beautiful people, I'm Allison. Welcome back to AK and Books. Today I'm going to be talking about sorority recruitment at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. This is going to be my second year going into U of I. I love it there. I am in a sorority. It all worked out well for me. I went through recruitment last fall and it was a very unique experience for me. I, it was, <laughs> to be honest, it was the most unnecessarily stressful process of my life because I just didn't know what I was going into. They tell you to trust the system going in and I didn't really understand that. How can you trust the system? But you don't really have a choice and I should have came in with a more open mind and understanding that these girls knew what they're doing. When I originally was going into college, I wasn't going to go through recruitment. I didn't see myself as a sorority girl because what I knew of sororities was the stereotypical um, properties of a sorority. But going in and being in a sorority shows me that that none of that stuff is really true. The stuff you see in movies and TV shows isn't true or reality. And I'm really happy that I went through recruitment after all. But while I was going through the process, I was very stressed out and I didn't really know if I belonged. And that's why I would say I was maxing out on my stress levels because I didn't really understand what being in a sorority meant. This video I'm going to be talking about how recruitment is at U of I because U of I has 19 Panhellenic sororities. That's how many you rush, recruit through. And you go through that in two and a half weeks with most of the days not being in rush, but the days that you're in recruitment, it's very, um, it takes up your whole day pretty much. Okay, the day before recruitment starts, you go through to a meeting in Fullinger, where that's where the only place where they can fit all the girls that are rushing, which is around 2,500 girls. They tell you about recruitment and all that, blah, 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 the information about recruitment. And then you get split up into your 19 different groups that you're going to be going around campus on the first two days with. With your Gamma Chi's, you get to meet your Gamma Chi's. They give you all the information, all your goodies in your bag. With your booklet about sororities and your notes, your water bottle, and a new umbrella in case it rains. And they also give you your name tag with your name, P&M number. P&M stands for Potential New Member, which is what you are when you will go through recruitment. You have to wear the name tag throughout the process of recruitment. You have to have it on so everyone knows who you are and what your name is. Every day when recruitment starts, you have to meet in a certain place on the quad, where mostly on the quad, where you meet with your group and your Gamma Chi's and you check in. First round is called Open House. Open House is two days long and you visit all 19 sororities in those two days. The first day for us was a Thursday. They're, on the Thursday you visit nine houses and on Friday you visit 10 houses. And this is all after your classes end. The outfits for open house are very simple. You have to wear the shirt they give you. It's just a, for us it was a dark blue navy shirt that said, had a little Panhellenic design on the back and a little Panhellenic design on the front. So everyone looks the same, and with your bottoms you wear like a skirt or shorts, something very simple that you would wear on a normal day. I wore a jean skirt one day, and I'm not sure what I wore the other day. So um, I didn't really know what I was going into for open house. I knew that we were going to go to all the sororities, they were going to do a little entertainment, then we are going to talk to them. I was very afraid of talking to them. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. After going in, I was so thankful because all the girls in the sororities are so kind and helpful. And they will talk to you. They will carry the conversation if you have trouble talking. They've been training for months because they want new members. They're so excited. Everyone's so happy. And I was very overwhelmed by that itself. Um, they say to go in with an open mind. I didn't really do that. I kept telling myself I was. But after going through the recruitment, I realized that I wasn't. And that I was shielding myself from being my true self. I was being shy. And I was I, that's the only thing I regret from recruitment is that I didn't really express myself to the fullest. So open house, your Gamma Chi's are, which I didn't mention before, but there are girls who are already in sororities and they volunteered, signed up to help P&Ms. They don't tell you what sorority they are in, so they don't persuade you either way, but they tell you at the very end once you already picked your sorority. They are helping you from house to house, telling you where to go. Having the group follow you, they tell you to walk faster, to walk across the street in one pack. You're very thankful for them because, especially in the first round, you don't know where you're going. You don't know where the sororities are, especially if you're new to campus like me. There are girls, sophomores, juniors, seniors who rush, 
but the majority of girls who rush are freshmen. I will warn you that there are people on the streets, boys from frats, other people who laugh at you, the girls all running in the same pack. It is kind of funny when you look at it. So going from house to house is really entertaining for me at least because you talk really fast and when you're walking from house to house you have to write down notes about the house before which I highly recommend. I think it's one of the most important things you do. It is so you remember the impression of each house, what you thought, what you didn't like, what you did like, what the conversations you had with the girls were, what girls you did talk to, because after going through 19 sororities you will not remember. I know at the moment you think you'll remember and you will remember certain houses but a lot of them you will not remember because it's all all turns into mumbo jumbo because everything is so compact you run from house to house immediately not don't really have any breaks the next day was second day of open house it was the same routine but this time 10 houses instead of nine so overall you go through 19 houses and you get a little impression of each house so at the end of open house, you go to a building, um, different for everyone, where you preference your top 13 sororities out of the 19. This is because next round, the maximum houses you can have is 13. It just matters who invites you back. They have more control over you. You can get invited back to a house that you didn't like. It means that they invited you back. Next, Saturday and Sunday was first invite. That's when you have 13 houses at most, and you meet with your group at the beginning of the day, with your gamakais, they give you a sheet of paper and it tells you your schedule. What houses you're going to be going to and when, and it tells you how many houses you got invited back to. This could be anywhere from one house to 13 houses. So for me, I did not have all 13 houses. I had seven or eight, I think. I'm not sure the exact number, but I had seven or eight houses. I did have a couple that I remember I liked by then. So first invite, you have to show yourself around the campus yourself. This is when girls are using Google Maps a lot. There are specific sororities that are on one side of the campus and specific ones that are on the other side. And if you have those two sororities next to each other in your schedule, you have to book it. <laughs> you see girls in dresses and rompers running across campus. I'm very lucky I didn't have to run between any houses. All of mine are pretty close. Um, the farthest I had to go for a walk was like 15 minutes maybe. This round, the outfits are a little nicer. You can wear a dress, romper. I will insert a picture of my two dresses here and here because I wore two different dresses on the two different days of first invite. I didn't want to wear the same dress two days in a row. That's just me. It's a casual dress, and like a nice day dress. Or you can wear a romper. Um, they have dress guidelines online. Every girl wears something different. In first invite, you get rid of a lot of the simple questions that girls are asking you during open house. Because during open house, most of the questions that you get asked are, what's your name? Where are you from? What's your major? How are you liking campus so far if you are a freshman? You get asked the same questions in every house and you get really used to answering each question. So first invite a sisterhood round. This is when they talk to you about their sisterhood, all the girls in the house socializing, that kind of thing. Um, they tell you what they do for fun. They ask you what you do for fun, what your favorite day out would be, things like that. I remember going to each house, and this is when I realized what my favorite house was, well, what my, like, couple favorites were. Next, you go to a building again, and you have to preference for the next round your favorite houses again. And this time, seven houses instead of 13. Next round is second invite. Second invite is the philanthropy round. It is seven houses you can get invited back into. A lot of girls don't have all seven. I had four, I think. When you go to each house this time, you learn about each sorority's philanthropy. Each sorority has a different philanthropy that they fundraise for and that they spend their time with. And it gets very personal for some girls. The outfits for this round are nicer. Each round gets progressively nicer. This round, you wear nicer dresses or nicer rompers. I wore a romper. I will insert a picture here. I'm sorry that all these pictures are weird mirror pictures in my dorm. <laughs> That's what I did at that point. That's how I can get a whole body shot. The round before, I wore sandals. This round, I wore wedges. It just shows that you wear nicer things as it goes on. At the end of second invite, you go to a building again, and you have to preference one more time. Not one more time. It's the second to last time. Um, this time, you pick your top two houses out of the ones you went to. You only go to two during preference round, which is the last round before bid day. So I didn't say before, but second invite is one day Saturday. You went, you skipped a whole week of classes. 
just to let everything settle in. And second invite was on Saturday. And then that night you do your preferences and the next day, Sunday, you do preference round with your top two houses. You can either be invited back to one or two houses. I was invited to two houses. That's a <laughs> It's the first time since Open House that I went to the full amount of houses you can go to, but I remember my top two houses. I remember going to both of them. I had good conversations with each person that I talked to at both houses. It was very special. They, It's more of an intimate experience that time. They show you how you are special and how you will fit into the sorority if you join, if you end up joining. For outfits this round, and this is the nicest out of all rounds, I wore a black dress with black heels. I remember a lot of the girls from the sororities, well I mean all the girls from the sororities, are either wearing black or white most of the time, or red maybe. So overall this round was my favorite. I had the best conversations with the girls I talked to at both houses I went to. It really made the experience worthwhile for me. At the end of preference, you have to preference one more time. You go to a room, it's very confidential, you have to um, pick your first choice and your second choice. The thing is that if you want one sorority and not the other, it's called a suicide bid. And when you suicide bid, you put one sorority on your sheet and you don't put a second one down. And that way, you either get into the sorority that you want, the first one, or you get nothing at all. For the other choice, you write two down and you either get to your first choice or second choice, and there's still an option that you can't get invited back to a sorority either way. Um, with a suicide bid, there's more of a chance that you won't get invited back, but at this point, most girls do get invited back. More than the majority of girls do get invited back to a house, one or two, um, even if they suicide bid. But because by preference, it pretty much means that these girls like you as much as you like them. I personally did a suicide bid because I knew the house I wanted to get into. The other house, even though I had a great conversation, I didn't think I'd fit into as well. I just knew I really wanted the one house, and I'd be okay if I didn't get in anything at all at that point. So, the thing is that that night, I think if you don't get a bid, they call you and they tell you not to go to bid day the next day. That's the thing, so they don't get upset or sad And when you don't get a bid. It sounds very bad, and I'm, it sounds, I'm cringing because I wouldn't, ugh, I don't want that for anyone. So you've gone through this process, and on this Monday is a bid day and that's crazy because you've gone through all of this, all this stress, all the houses, all the talking to these girls, all of the songs getting stuck in your head and you are finally done. You get to join your sorority, you get to have your bid, you get to have your letter and uh, it's exciting. So all the girls get called to the same place which for us was Follinger again. You can tell at the end of this that a lot of girls have dropped. We started out with 2,500. I would say we lost at least 500 through the whole process, which isn't that bad. Everyone gets to open their card at the same time, and that's when everyone goes crazy, and you open your card, you see what sorority you got into, then you run outside to where girls in the sorority are waiting for you to run to the house. So that's how it all ends. I remember doing, I remember all of bid day. I remember um, meeting new girls. I remember just feeling welcome and happy. Going back on my whole experience, I would say my main piece of advice would be to have an open mind. Don't hate the process. Um, it will stop you from enjoying yourself, which is what I did for most of the process. I wasn't really enjoying myself until the second round, second invite or preference even. It definitely caused me unnecessary stress, and I would say just to go with it and trust what they tell you because you can't really do anything else. You don't really have a choice but to trust the process, which is fine because they know what they're doing. You don't really, especially with the campus with 19 sororities, I'm sure that people can find happiness in more than one sorority, but you do end up where you're supposed to be at the end of the process, which is just great at U of I's part, at Penn Hellenic's part. So that is all I have to say today about sorority recruitment. If you have any further questions, please comment below, ask me about anything sorority recruitment related, U of I related. I would be happy to make another video about this stuff, about sorority recruitment and U of I or both. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video about sorority recruitment. Please follow me at AKN Books at Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Please like this video and subscribe. That would be great. Once again, thank you for watching. I'm Allison, and you've been watching AKN Books. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, beautiful people.